Our presiding bishop, the most reverend Michael Curry, is fond of encouraging that we keep the faith. It's a message of our gospel. It's a message we need to hear each day. It's a message to keep the faith that we especially need to hear on this day. The images of hatred and violence in Charlottesville this weekend are disturbing. The hatred which has so infected the hearts of white supremacists is evil. There's no other word for it. The hate they profess, the oppression they perpetuate, and the violence they inflict runs counter to the witness of love that is Jesus. And our baptismal covenant calls us to strive for justice and peace among all people, respect the dignity of every human being. And when hatred and violence like that of white supremacy are on display, we are to challenge the hatred with love and the violence with peace. But in so doing, we are to challenge boldly the idea that any race is less than any other, that any person does not deserve respect or dignity. As the church, we need to continue to be the church, to bear witness to the love and to the mercy and to the justice and compassion of God in Christ. And we need to engage more deeply in the work of justice and equality for all people. So as disciples of Jesus, we are challenged to living into God's call to follow Jesus boldly, even or especially when there is a measure of risk and fear involved. But if we are to follow Jesus, we have no other choice. We must bear witness to the love, to the compassion, and to the justice of Jesus in the face of hatred, violence, or any type of oppression. So my friends, what happens here at Holy Family Episcopal Church matters. Keeping the faith as followers of Jesus matters. Doing all that we can do as disciples of Jesus to share that love and that compassion and the mercy and the justice of God in Christ is important. Don't, any, don't let anyone ever tell you that it is not. And don't let anyone ever co-opt the message of Jesus and distort the gospel and twist it for hatred and for violence. That is not the way of God. It is not the way of the Christ. So it is important in standing up and proclaiming that evil will not be tolerated and evil will not have the last word. But we must, as Bishop Curry encourages us, keep the faith. As Peter discovered in today's gospel lesson from Matthew, when faith wavers too much, we can begin to sink. And Jesus instructs his disciples from our lesson this morning to get in the boat, go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he goes off to pray. Now, the Sea of Galilee is known even to this day for suddenness of heavy windstorms at certain times of the year. And one such storm comes up upon the disciples as they are in the boat far away from shore. The boat is being battered by waves as the wind howls. And Jesus walks out onto the sea. At first, the disciples think they are seeing a ghost. And they're terrified. And Jesus tells them to not be afraid. So Peter calls out to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus tells him to come. So Peter steps out of the boat and begins walking on the water toward Jesus. But then Peter is gripped by fear. And when he, in that moment when he is gripped by that fear, he begins to sink. He cries out to Jesus and Jesus takes Peter's hand and safely returns him to the boat. 
But what is particularly interesting to me is that when Jesus says to Peter, after they're back safely in the boat, you of little faith, why did you doubt? We tend automatically, don't we, to associate doubt with the definition of disbelief. However, doubt as a verb can also mean fear or to be afraid. Let's think about that for a moment. Peter steps out boldly into the storm raging waves of the Sea of Galilee, believing he can walk on the waves toward Jesus because it is Jesus standing before him. Matthew's gospel does not say Peter all of a sudden was overtaken by disbelief. Matthew's gospel tells us this about Peter. When he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Matthew's gospel seems to suggest Peter is overtaken by fear. And it, this, it is this fear that shakes his faith. When Jesus says Peter lacks faith and asks him how he could doubt, in this context, there is an argument to be made that doubt is not disbelief, but rather it is in fact fear. And context is everything, always. So there is a clear argument to be made that doubt is not disbelief, but it is fear. And Jesus told the disciples not to be afraid. He told them not to be afraid when they saw him out on the water. And it is only when Peter is frightened that he begins to sink beneath the waves of the Sea of Galilee. Now, we all know it's only human to be afraid from time to time. So Peter was being nothing more and nothing less than human. And we know fear did not keep Peter from following Jesus and in fact becoming the first bishop in Rome. So we should be assured. Faith is not the total absence of fear. Rather, it is not allowing fear to consume and control us. It is not allowing fear to hold us back from following Jesus where he wants to lead us. And the late Werner Dogier was an Episcopal laywoman and truly one of our great theologians and teachers. She wrote in her book, The Dream of God, the following. Faith implies risk. The faith view of reality is frightening in its openness. Kingdom of God thinking calls us to risk. We always see through a glass darkly, and that is what faith is about. The God revealed in Jesus, whom I call the Christ, is a God whose forgiveness goes ahead of me and whose love sustains me and the whole created world. That God bursts all the definition of our small minds, all the limitations of our tired efforts, all the boundaries of our institutions. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. Fear is. Fear will not risk that even if I am wrong, I will trust that I move today by the light that is given me, knowing it is only finite and partial. I will know more and different things tomorrow than I know today. And I can be open to the new possibility I cannot even imagine today. So, my friends, we are called to keep the faith. And disciples in this holy village, you do not need to look very far for examples. Holy Family Episcopal Church has a rich history of keeping the faith. It took faith for a small group of Christians to begin meeting nearly three decades ago in Jeffrey Lee's home, in the basement of a bank, and then in a middle school gymnasium. It took faith in the spring of 1994 to launch a capital campaign, to break ground a year later and construct this church building we are worshiping in today. It took faith to transition from a family size to a pastoral sized congregation as it meant making room for new people, new ideas, and forming a growing community of disciples. 
Change is never easy. Church transitions of any kind are always hard. It takes faith to do them well. But Holy Family, you didn't stop there. You didn't say we have enough faith. No, you added church staff to support growth, an organ to enhance your worship music, and you emerged from mission status to become a self-sustaining parish in the diocese. And one of the most talked about ministries of this parish is that you are bucking the trends of declining membership in mainline denominations. You've actually expanded your children and youth ministries, two areas vital to growing the Jesus movement. And while this is all good news, keeping the faith isn't just about showing up on Sundays not even primarily about showing up on Sundays. But you have kept the faith. You've kept the faith by focusing beyond these walls. You've kept the faith by engaging mission work as the hearts and hands of Jesus in the world. You've kept the faith by witnessing to the love of God in Jesus Christ. Keeping the faith has kept you moving forward forward to the city of God, another capital campaign which resulted in your expanded facilities for education and hospitality, an expansion which has built a firm foundation for the future of all God is calling Holy Family Episcopal Church to be. And while you're keeping the faith as something to be celebrated as a community, do not let them be cause for you to rest on your laurels. Faith always, always calls us forward. If you fear moving forward, that is where you can get tripped up. Just ask Peter. It is our fear which is the opposite of our faith, and we cannot and we must not, in the days in which we live in, allow fear to rule our hearts. It is fear of other that can lead to division and to hatred and to violence like was on display in Charlottesville this weekend. And Jesus will have no part of it. So it will take faith to, all, to honor all the moments of faith entrusted to you. It will take faith in which those you have helped create. Because God is calling Holy Family forward. So it will take faith to become a bigger blessing. It will take faith to resist evil and transform systems of oppression. It will take faith to show forth and witness to the love of God in Jesus Christ. To let the world know, to let the world know that Jesus loves the world and will love it to the end. And that we are to be about the mercy and the justice and the compassion of God Christ. So fear is the only thing that can hold you back. But Jesus tells us not to be afraid. Holy family, you have come this far by faith, but God is not finished with this holy village yet. There's much more mission, ministry and witness to Jesus' love the world needs it now more than ever. So be that light. Be that witness. Show forth the love of God that is in your hearts as disciples of Jesus. Holy family, keep the faith. Amen.